Moi University Akshaya project on the development of a module on the economic role of prices and approaches to the study of agricultural marketing and performance. This module was developed by the Department of Economics and Agricultural Resource Management in a collaboration with the Collaborative Masters in Agricultural and Applied Economics, OER Africa, and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. In this video recording, we will see how milk is handled, functions performed, institutions that perform those functions, and major bottlenecks in the marketing system. We will first listen to an interview of a dairy farmer and a milk vendor. Sasa, wai farm yangu mimi mwenyewe naitwa Willy Kirwa. Welcome to my zero grazing farm. I have more than 40 dairy cows. For now, I milk 14 cows out of which I get 250 liters of milk per day. On my farm, I use dry feeds. Personally, I use wheat straws, boma rods, dry maize stovers, and we mix with silage. I have two dairy breeds, namely Ashayas and Freshians. A good thing about Freshians is that we produce a lot of milk, although it is quality is low. If you look at the Ashayas, I have, they produce milk which is rich in cream. Even when you test the milk, it tastes nice. We breed both types, and when we milk, we mix the milk which gives us a good quality of milk. In this zero grazing unit of mine, there is a place for cows to sleep and a place for feeding. We give our cows silage, wheat straw, coma rods, together with wheat bran which we mix. Where the cows sleep, we spread straw which we remove every day and put fresh ones to maintain cleanliness and guard against mastitis. Usually, we use a drug called Express Blue. After milking, we dip each teat of the cows into the drug. We milk thrice a day and we dip the teats after each milking. This is a must. Personally, I serve my cows using artificial insemination because if you use AI after three to five years, you will have a pedigree animal on your farm. Personally, I use semen from ABS. After calving, we get good calves. After two days, we separate the calf from the mother and we give four liters to the calf per day. We feed twice a day, two liters in the morning and two liters in the evening. After two and a half months, we give calf pellets for three months, after which we introduce other feeds plus silage and boma rods. If you follow up that calf, you will find that after 18 months, it will be ready to be served because of fast growing in the unit. Right now, I milk 12 cows which produce 250 liters of milk per day. My leading cow produces 32 liters per day and we milk three times per day because if you train a cow to be milked thrice a day, it is possible. We milk at 5 a.m., 12 noon, and 8 p.m. After milking in the evening, we put the milk in the cooler. I sell my milk to schools who offer a good price of 32 shillings per litre, which I consider good. 
because previously the price had dipped 15 shillings per liter at 15 shillings per liter the farmer will not get anything because of the high cost of feeds fortunately and this time brookside has increased its price 30 shillings a liter which we think will be benefit farmers we are trying to feed cows using dry feeds it is not like feeding nepe grass or green grass Dry matter in, is always good feed since it leads to creamy milk which is heavy. We bring someone who looks at quality of milk on our farm. Without checking the quality of milk, you may find that the cow has mastitis and milk delivery to Brookside will be rejected. Almost on a weekly basis, one checks whether your milk is good. Mostly they check the bacterial count which determines whether milk can stay for three days or more when packed. If the government helps by stopping milk imports, it will benefit us because those who import milk powder are spoiling the market. The government should therefore intervene so as to benefit us. Another issue is drugs for foot and mouth disease, which is a problem here and is cause fever as well. If the government does not monitor quality of drugs imported, we will suffer. Farmers should come together to form cooperative societies which manage themselves and where farmers who are more knowledgeable on animal feeding will train other farmers. That is when we will work jointly with the government. Now, welcome to Chekwelele University College Farm. This is one of the farms in the, this college. It's a department that runs uh, commercially. It operates on 400 acres where we plant maize, wheat and day. We measure mostly on day farming and then followed by maize. In Chepelel farm we have a, a total of a 145 animals that is a breed, Aisha and some freshans. Now day is an enterprise that we really undertake on business level. What we really put in is we want to come out more than what we put in to make more profit. Currently we are milking uh, 50 animals, having the highest producer 52 liters cow, but with a total average of 24 liters. So that is to say we are coming up or we are milking a total of 1,000 liters daily. When we get the uh, 1,000 or slightly above that, where is our market? The market that we have currently is the staff, the students, and our neighbors. Our current price is 30, liters, uh, 30 shillings per liter, while the outside is selling 32, the up to 35 shillings per liter. But we are giving them at 30 shillings. Why do we, how do we afford to give them a 30 shillings? We as the farm, we devised a method that we really look at the production cost level by putting in what we have from our farm. We prepare the silage, feeds for that, for the animals. We prepare the hay from the wheat straws. Although hay people look at as a leftover of the wheat, but it is good for our animals. That is why we can afford to sell the milk slightly lower than the market. Now, apart from the the price that apart from the market that we get inside the university, 
We also have the other market outside, that is the milk processors. When we have any surplus maize, we shall look at KCC, we shall look at Brookside, we shall look at Ndonyo Lesos. Those are our outlet outside our internal market that we have here. But hardly do we go to them because the market that we have here is enough for us. Sometimes we even don't beat that market, especially when the students close and the children of the staff are at home. They will want to take more milk than they have been taking. It's only maybe one to two months in a year that we may really need to go the, to the processor. That is uh, June, July, when most of the population is out of the campus. That's when we can only go out. But for only the rest of the year, we have market. In dairy farming, there are various things that you have to look at. Apart from the feeding you do to your animals, is the hygiene of the production level. What we have done is uh, we looked at what people are looking at. We really gave what were the demands of our customers. They were looking at the hygiene before we bought the milking machine. So some of them really wanted how we can improve our milk. So what we did was we invested in a milking machine. And not only for the hygiene. When we went to 45 liters per cow, it became too hectic to the hand milking, such that people could not com do the complete milking. And we were really getting problems with the mastitis. So we invested in a milking machine. When we bought the milking machine and people saw the hygiene the milk was undergoing the, in production. We really won a very big market. Let us also watch another interview from Dairy Board of Kenya official. The Kenya Dairy Board is a parastotal within the Ministry of National Development. We have three mandates. Uh, we regulate the dairy sector. We promote and uh, develop also. We regulate the sector through through uh, quality, 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 quality control system, which we, we go out. Uh, we randomly test it at milk, uh, and, and uh, we test on several parameters uh, on, on alteration, uh, preservatives, checking on preservatives. Uh, we test also on uh, on antibiotics. We regulate the sector through licensing because we want to get the right personnel on board. You know, regulation is a big thing, so you cannot uh, solely do it alone. You know, we want the whole chain to, to we really want to promote a system that is self regulated where the farmer knows that this is uh, what I, sh uh, I should be doing in terms of ensuring a quality product that is a quality production of milk. Now, coming up part of the chain, we have transporters. Those ones are also key in ensuring the system, the quality milk reaches the market. So we work with these guys, we organize seminars with them, we organize workshops with them to unsensitize them on these issues on quality. Uh, we advise all the traders that one key issue is they have to use the right containers. Right now, we are working out with many other stakeholders to ensure the right containers are being used to transport milk. And the right containers are these aluminium cans. Still on quality, some things that are really difficult for us, the infrastructure is still a challenge. What we are doing is also, we are ensuring we have the right personnel on board so that they can be able to assist us to regulate the sector and so that we can get that good product in the market. We're also working with other stakeholders now to, to ensure there is uh, training along the chain. We, we, we also look at what comes in. You know, we also protect our, our, our system here, our production. We protect our farmers also. So, so anything to do with imports, we make sure uh, there is really totally limited 
uh, imports. We, we promote consumption of milk. Uh, currently, our consumption is uh, close to 100 liters per person uh, per year. So, so that is still uh, almost 50 percent down. You know, we the target is is uh, one health organization target is uh, that uh, consumption of of, uh, of milk should go close to 200 liters per per person per year. Our our key challenge is uh, we don't have enough personnel right now. Uh, so so we are very few. So capacity is, is an issue in implementing the daily activities in, in this region. So that is what I can, is a key one. Dairy sector, as we all know, is really, is, 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 is the fastest growing sector now. Yeah, uh, uh, it's the fastest growing sector. It is a sector that all of us should put in a lot of effort. It is a sector that uh, can, can reduce the poverty, which is within our, 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 our country now, you know. We are also saying, uh, we are also promoting dairy now uh, in other areas. We have other areas called emerging dairy areas. We are not focused now to, to, to dairy cows and dairy boards also is going beyond that. We are now focused on, 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 on even uh, milk from camels, you know, processing milk from camels, milk from dairy cows. And, and, and so we are also extending from the traditional dairy areas into uh, dairy emerging areas. So dairy is a key one and, and we want to promote dairy across the whole nation. Finally, let's watch a Ministry of Livestock official. We are in the Department of Livestock Production and livestock production has all the enterprises. If I narrow in to our district in Wasenigishu, the main enterprise is the dairy production. And our main role in the ministry, actually, we deliver extension services to our beneficiaries. That is our clients, those are farmers, dairy farmers mainly. What we pass the message to the, our dairy farmers is mainly we carry out dairy farming as a business. The moment you talk of dairy, you're talking of milk production. And milk production, if you are addressing business in dairy farming, we know milk is for consumption. The first business we do with the milk production is we make sure that we have a future cow. So the milk produced, at least 20% should go to uh, feeding of the calf. And we assume the calf should be of superior genetic potential than the, the mother. Like now, if we approach dairy farming as a business, when we talk to our farmer, you know, the animal requirements, whether you have a large scale, you are a large scale farmer or a small scale farmer, you have to address the requirements of a, an animal as a unit, the animal itself. We tell the Mukulima now, if you keep this animal, you know you are in business of milk production. And milk production must reach the market. That is consumption now. And the first market, we look at investing in the calf. That should fetch better price than the, the mother. And you know that is now where we know it has also improved in genetic potential to produce more than the mother. So at least the 20% of the total milk produced should end up to a calf. And on average, a calf takes 4 liters. Now assuming that's the 20%. We expect now 80% to reach the market. So we tell farmers now maintain standards. Now when it comes to marketing, we tell them to bulk the milk. And bulking means you know, like small-scale farmers are more than the large-scale farmers. You tell them come as a group. And there, the bargaining power, at least then you can negotiate a bit for an extra shilling. So we tell farmers, do value addition at village level, cottage, we call them cottage industries. Processing means even cooling milk is processing. From there, we tell him, reduce the cost of it so that the milk, at least the price, will improve, or the profits.
from these scenarios, you can clearly see how milk is handled, dairy sector institutions and functions they perform, as well as the major bottlenecks in the dairy value chain from a commodity perspective.